Evening, Evening folks. Evening. Good, to see you. Good to see you. Boy, I tell you what, Mark and Midori quit playing. Y'all got quiet. Time to get started then. Amen. Amen. Yeah, here. Good to see everybody. Appreciate you being here. Hey, I wasn't with you at the 1045 service, but Jamie run me off. <laughs> He said, you know I wasn't serious, right? <laughs> anyway, I tell you what, that is, that is probably one of the most difficult things to do is preach to the same people on Sunday morning. You know, if, if, I mean, I've been set, I was sitting down at 8.30 and he preached, 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 and then he, he said, you going home? I said, well, I wasn't planning on it. He said, I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand completely what he's saying, so. But anyway, good to see all of you this evening. Uh, we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. She will just continue to remember uh, David's family, David Dobbins' family, and uh, home going of Shirley. Are they doing okay, Rosa? Family doing okay? He is. He just got home a while ago. He's doing okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, I texted him earlier today, and man, I'm going to tell you what, he sent back a text message to me, have me on shouting ground. I mean, it's, it's good to know that your loved ones know Jesus. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, if you, if, you have, if you don't have a clear testimony, then you need to do something about it. Right. And not just for yourself, but you need to do something about it for your family. Right. Amen. 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 So keep them in prayer. And Otis, you had a brother-in-law pass away uh, in Tennessee, and so y'all remember uh, Otis's family and, uh, and that family there, and just uh, keep them in prayer. Uh, others tonight we need to remember? Yes, ma'am. Remember us for traveling grace tomorrow. Okay. All right. Where are you headed? BA. BA. All right. Y'all remember Daryl and Lovetta? Yes, ma'am. My sister in law, Jenny, her dad passed away and she's up in Michigan. She had to go to Michigan, but he passed away. Okay. Remember that family? If you will. Any others? Not yet. Lisa. Remember the Osborne and the Lott family. Um, Kim had sent me a message when I got out of church today. Said everything seemed to be going well. And that the doctor will call her at noon, and then Robert sent me a message around for you, so they've got a decision made today or tomorrow. So. Well, it's been up and down with her, haven't it? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that family? Remember my sister's son, Jan, who was born. They did some more tests, and she's full of cancer. She's supposed to have surgery on May 2nd. Oh, All right. For her? Any others? Jerry? Yeah, a couple of days ago, I got a phone call from a family member who wanted me to go uh, check on his wife, who I, I, I don't like, and I don't want to be around, I'm going to give you details about that. And she said, I saw his work, so I got a phone call the other day, a couple of days later, and, and found out that uh, he, he was going to do it because she, she had stage four uh, lung cancer. Uh -huh. so I was going to call him up and tell him the reason why he was going to do it. That's good preaching right there, Jerry. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we need to bridle our tongue. That's what the Bible tells us. If we can't do that, the Bible says our religion's in vain. That's right. Amen. Joy? Um, a lot of you know Sandy and Russell Deals. And yes. Sandy's brother just passed away, I think it was yesterday. Um, right now, I can't remember what her maiden name was, but they lived in Virginia. But just remember that family. Yeah. Amen. Jerry? Her name is Brady for her. Her name is, I'm going to say Martha. Martha. Okay. All right. Any others? Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And I invite you to come to the altar. Cast these cares upon the Lord. Prepare our hearts for the message tonight. <laughs> Father, we come before your throne tonight and we just want to give you praise. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for the way that you love us and care for us and provide for us and protect us. And God, you just uh, you meet all of our needs we, through Jesus Christ. And we just want to thank you and praise you tonight for our wonderful Savior. We thank you for the way that uh, Jesus was willing to lay down his life that we might uh, have life and, and might be able to uh, 
be forgiven of our sins. And so, God, we just thank you for our Savior tonight. We just pray that everything that's said and done here tonight will be uh, for his glory and for his praise. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for the family of God tonight. It's good to be able to come together uh, in unity of the Spirit. It's good to be able to pray together and rejoice together and, and uh, worship together. And so, Father, we just uh, we have so much to thank you for tonight and give you praise for Fathers, we pray we, uh, we want to remember those that are suffering in body, those families that are grieving tonight. Uh, Lord, we, uh, we've had several lifted up by name tonight. Uh, we know that you know each one of them, and we pray for your will to be done in their life. Uh, Father, for these families that are going through the passing of loved ones, we pray, God, that you comfort their hearts and minister to them. And we pray, Father, that uh, through uh, this time, uh, Lord, that you'll draw people closer to you, that you'll draw these families closer together. God, we'll thank you and praise you for that. Uh, be with those that are uh, weak in body tonight. Uh, Lord, just ask that you comfort them and strengthen them. And Father, we do pray for healing tonight. Uh, we ask God that you'd be with Daryl and Lavetta. I know that they've been going through a lot, uh, not only uh, physically, but with the passing of uh, Daryl's brother. We ask God that you comfort them. Uh, be with the Luck family, dear Lord, and, and minister to them. Uh, God, all those that are suffering, uh, we're thankful that you are the great physician tonight. We just ask that you have your hands upon them. Thank you for the good messages this morning, dear Lord. We just uh, ask God that you help us to apply it to our hearts. And we ask once again, Lord, that you open our hearts tonight, that your word might go forth and accomplish what is pleasing to you. We know that your word is good seed. Father, let our hearts be good soil tonight, that it might bring forth fruit that is pleasing to you. We'll thank you and praise you for it all. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'll stand and sing hymn number 79. 79. <laughs>
but he will not be with us Tuesday. He's got a, a doctor's appointment. He's got to go back for an actual one, so he's not going to be able to be with us. So make sure that you let people know about that, but to invite people to come. I, I can tell you right now, it's going to be a blessing to them. Uh, ja Jamie was talking about Israel this morning and, and about how things are relating to these end times. Jesus is coming. Yes. And, and if you want to see how clearly that is, you just take set your eyes on Israel and you can see it. But, but Ralph's been over there. Ralph's got a, a great uh, ministry on prophecy and things like that. And so I know it's going to be a blessing to us. And so you make sure that you're here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Monday night. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? The Gospel Rocks, I see that you've gotten them out. People's already telling me that they've put them out. Uh, uh, so, uh, who showed me a picture a while ago? Was it the... Somebody showed me... Yeah. yeah. Matt didn't put one out. At, uh, where, where was it? Cabo. Cabo. The old Mexican restaurant. They <laughs> got one there, and then... Uh, Ms. Trotsky, you put one out on the bench somewhere? Uh, by Walmart. Right. Oh, by Walmart. Amen. So anyway, people's already put them out. And go ahead and take your pictures and send them to me, and we'll, we'll post them around. And, and, and boy, I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait till somebody walks in and say, hey, I found this rock at Cabo. And, man, what, isn't that going to be a blessing? Yeah, it sure it is. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Texas Road out. We're getting all the meeting places. Amen. So good. Good. Good Baptist. Good, huh? good Baptist. That's right. That's right. So anyway. Uh, we're going to have a choir every night at uh, Ralph Sexton too. Go have Sunday, yeah. Sunday morning, Sunday, Sunday night, and Wednesday, uh, Monday, Monday night. Yeah. Monday night. Uh, we'll be a choir, so don't forget that. And uh, if, you, if you need to get some more rocks, go ahead and get those. Uh, I know the Burroughs family, they put out the ones they got this morning. They've already picked up three more, I think. And so uh, go ahead and get them. Let's get them out. Uh, let's see. The golf tournament. Don't forget about the golf tournament. I appreciate uh, folks already uh, doing some things as far as getting whole sponsors and, and teams and things like that. So just uh, if you got questions about what need, what, what the needs are, uh, you can see Penny about that. And uh, but go ahead and get your team signed up. Even if you don't pay for it now, uh, go ahead and get your team signed up so that we can let the golf course know how many teams we're going to have. Uh, let's see. Men's ministry Thursday night. Uh, we will have a meal provided. Uh, we've got a special preacher coming. Uh, looking forward to that. And uh, uh, you just need to be here. Be good fellowship, good preaching, good food. So all you men need to plan on being here for that. Anything else need to be announced? All right. Let's worship the Lord with our giver.
said whosoever will that included me that included you oh thank God thank God we have a Savior I just want to praise him tonight he deserves it he is worthy right brother he is Thank God that I don't live like I used to. <laughs> you heard my testimony. Living for the devil wide open. But thank God I don't anymore. That's right. Right. Amen. Thank God I'm living for Jesus. Yes. I fail. I know I'm the only one here that sins, but I sin. But thank God if I get on my knees and ask him to forgive me, he'll forgive me. Yeah. The only one who won't forgive is blaspheming in the Holy Ghost. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Amen. That I'm able to stand here tonight. All I do all day is sit around. My wife fusses at me. <laughs> but I praise God when I get up there, I'll be running. Yes, you Used to run down here. Get outside and run around the church. Can't do that anymore, but one day I will. Amen. One day I will. Amen. Praise God. For His mercy, Amen. His love, and His grace. Thank God I got grace and didn't get justice. Amen. Thank justice, I'd be in hell. 
But thank God Almighty that I'm not going to hell tonight. But thank God I better got a better place to go to. This old this body here, I'll lay it down. I'll pick up that glorified body. There's no sin. There's sin on this body. But thank God that His precious blood washed away my sins. I thank God my brother got saved before he died. He was eight, almost 18 years older than me. Thank God one day I'll see him. Amen. Amen. I just want to praise the Lord and I can say I love you. Amen. 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 Anybody else? The reason I started crying during that song is because his parents. We try to protect our kids from everything. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, when I think about it, the words that you can suffer but we won't have to suffer to the extreme Amen. we think that yeah there's going to be some pain and suffering but it's not going to be real bad God's too good for that to happen But if you read it in Hebrews chapter 11, you can turn there if you like. I don't, I'm not preaching for this. It's just the Lord's God laid this on my heart, thinking about what Christ suffered for us, thinking about what his followers have suffered in the past. Yes. Yes. But it says in verse 32, the writer of Hebrews says, And what shall I more say? I mean, he's not told us about Abel and Noah and Moses and Abraham and Sarah. He says, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. And we say, man, that's it right there, buddy. That sounds good. We're, we're strong, we're powerful in Christ. We can get through all of this. 
Verse 35, women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. These people that were walking by faith were stoned, sawn asunder, <coughs> were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having attained a good report through faith, received not the promise. That's the, listen, that's the walk of faith. Amen. I don't know what we're going to have to endure, but don't, we don't need to fool ourselves and think that it's all going to be just a slap on the wrist or, uh, you know, it's... We need to be ready for whatever it is. Amen. We need to be ready in Christ. We need to be prayed up. We need to be studied up. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because the nearer the coming of Christ, the more persecution the church is going to suffer. Right. And when I say the church, I'm not talking about a building and I'm not talking about everybody in the church. I'm talking about the born again. Right. The ones that cannot give in to the world. The ones that will not give in to the world. The, one that, the ones that the most important thing to them is their testimony for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're not playing games. Jamie said this morning, this isn't a fairy tale. This is real. Amen. Amen. These are promises from God. Well, what I just read right there tells us what the walk of faith can be. Amen? So we need to be ready, don't we? Amen. Hallelujah. It, it is amazing to me that, man, I ain't, I, I'm going to preach. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Amen when you're there. Stand when you're there. All who can and will. Proverbs 23. Begin with verse 1. When thou saidest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. And put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. When thou set thine eyes upon that which is not, for riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Father, Thank you for the way that you have already put this service together. Thank you for suffering for us. Thank you for going all the way to the cross. And giving your life's blood for us. God, help, help us just to really get a hold of that tonight. That, that would be life-changing in itself. So, Lord, just continue to speak to our hearts. Help me to share what you've laid upon my heart, God. Let the Holy Spirit work here in a powerful way. We need you, Lord. We need you to work in us. We need to be surrendered to your will. So, Father, you have your way tonight. Whatever needs to be done here, we ask that you do it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I, I really think that what I have tonight is more of a, a lesson, really, than a, a, a message. I, I really, I don't, I don't, I don't see myself as sharing this tonight with a lot of, uh, not, not, I don't want to use the word enthusiasm.
enthusiasm because I, I feel like I am enthusiastic about the Word of God no matter what it says. Amen? Amen. But I want to share a message with you, a lesson tonight that has a terrible title. The title of the message is Spiritual Suicide. That's one of the worst words in the English language, suicide. I mean, it just kind of makes you sick to your stomach to hear it, especially if you know that someone has taken their own life. Someone has gotten to a point of such hopelessness that they take their own life. But I want us to be warned tonight that we can commit spiritual suicide. We can do things that will take the spiritual life right out of us. If we do not guard our spiritual life and stand against the darkness that is so prevalent in our world today, then we can find ourselves feeling though as though there is no hope. I believe a lot of Christians feel that way. With all the darkness, with all the immorality, with all the iniquity abounding, I believe that some Christians today have a hopeless feeling. And if we're not careful, we can drift away from our relationship, from our fellowship with God, and we'll become hopeless. I want you to look back at verse 1. It says, when thou sittest to eat with a ruler. Now, when it comes to the Word of God, interpretation is very narrow. Amen? Amen. It's not up to personal interpretation, the Word of God's not. Amen. We can't just come up with interpretations that fit what we think or what we want. That's right. Interpretation is very narrow. In fact, there is only one interpretation of the Scriptures, and that is a literal interpretation of the Scriptures. And so when it says, when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, the interpretation of that is that when you sit down with someone that is a ruler. That's the interpretation. Now when it comes to application, that can be very broad. Amen? And, and, and when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, it's talking about one that has power, one that has plenty, or one that has both. Amen? And, and so when we sit down with someone like that, then we, according to the Word of God here, we need to consider diligently what is before us, what is placed before us. Now that's the initial interpretation of it. That is the uh, sole interpretation of it. But as far as application goes, this ruler speaks of or is a type of the world. Amen? And, and so you just look at what's popular today. People are drawn to uh, possessions. They are drawn to power. They are drawn to money. Amen? That's what people are drawn to. We, we just, as a nation, we just said that we were going to inflict certain things on the Russians because of their invasion of, of uh, Ukraine. And you know what we went after? We went after their money. Yeah. Because we know that's where it hurts. We have confiscated luxury yachts owned by Russian businessmen. We have confiscated luxury homes owned by Russian businessmen and Russian families. We have uh, block their bank accounts. You know why? Because we know that's what is important to them. Well, that's what's important to a lot of people. Their possessions, their, their money, their, their position, their power. And, and you think about it as far as uh, the religious community today and church life. You know what the fastest growing uh, segment of that is? It is the health, wealth, and prosperity preachers. It is the health, wealth, and prosperity churches that are drawing them in by the thousands. Amen. And people today want the guys with the thousand dollar suits and the Rolex watches and, and, and the guarded homes. That's who they want tickling their ears today and telling them that's what life is all about. Amen. Now folks, I'm going to tell you something. If we're not careful, if we do not consider what is being set before us, if we are blind to what is going on around us, Jesus warns us of trying to serve two masters. Amen. And he says it cannot be done. But that is the ever constant temptation before every one of us. Every one of us. 
You know why we want to follow after the world? Because that's what the flesh wants to follow after. Right. And we all dwell in the flesh. Right. You say, yeah, but I'm born again. Well, praise God. You still dwell in the flesh. Right. There's no halo over your head. Right. Amen. Amen. You still have to battle this. You still have to deal with that, that, that war that goes on between the spirit and the flesh. They're always contrary the one to the other. You know why we cannot serve two masters? You know why we can't follow after the ways of the world and follow after Jesus? Because the world's going that way and Jesus is going that way. The world's going that way and Jesus is going that way. We can't follow them both. Go over to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Amen. Verse 21. You there? Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. If thine eye be single, that's a reference to staying focused on Jesus. Amen. Not focused on everything else, but just focused on Jesus. If thine eye be single, uh, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is thy darkness? I'll go back to the health, wealth, and prosperity uh, preaching. If that is the light that people have in them, how great is the darkness? <coughs> if they think that, that as, a, as a child of God, everything this world has to offer is supposed to be theirs, mm -hmm. how great is the darkness that's in thee? And go on and read there, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, that word mammon, we don't use that very often, but it's an Aramaic word, and it's, transliter it's transliterated into the Greek in the New Testament, and it means wealth, money, riches, and even property. Now, you tell me that's not what's popular today. You tell me that's not what's drawing people today. Amen. Uh, we were in, uh, we, Matt and Joyce and Tyler and Taylor and all our grandkids, they were camping at o Ocala and we went up to eat supper with them last night and, and they like to play games. I hate games. <laughs> Especially these kind of games. It's, it's Jenga. And I, I've seen that and I, I don't think I've ever played it before and I would not have played it if I'd known it was more to it than just pulling out the little sticks. I thought if you just pulled out little sticks and it didn't fall down, you was a winner. But you got to pull out these sticks and it's got questions on them. Or it's got little dares on them like you got to do something. I had to sing, I'm a little teapot. <laughs> That's why I hate these games. And there was a campsite right behind us. I bet they thought there was a metal board over there behind us. But one of the questions is, what would you do if you had a million dollars? And all our eyes light up because we love to think about what we would do with a million dollars. Man, what would we buy? What would we splurge on? You would have heard some of the answers last night. Uh, Taylor, she would buy her a, a Land Rover and uh, Matt. I don't know where in the world he went to school at. He said he's going to buy 158,000 acres or something out in Wyoming. He ain't going to do that with a million dollars. But that's what draws us. That's what, that's what we have to constantly be on guard against because if we're not careful, we get sucked into that. And, and the world, this old rich ruler, the world is setting it before us. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to consider what's going on because if not, the end result, look at verse 2. Go back over to our text and look at verse 2. He says, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man of appetite. Spiritual suicide. It's going to put a knife to your throat. If you're driven by your flesh and the appetite, it's going to put a knife to your throat. It's spiritual suicide. Amen. That's why we have to stand against this. That's why we have to guard against it. And I know this kind of preaching and this kind of teaching is not popular today because we have, <laughs> man, we have just... We see the world and we see everything that the world has to offer and we got to have it. we got to have more. we got to have faster. we got to have bigger. That's what mammon is. These things that are, are what draw us, so many of us. And what happens is our relationship becomes divided. We try our best to serve mammon. But we try our best to follow Jesus. And brothers and sisters, Jesus said that is an impossibility. 
That is spiritual suicide. If you find yourself being enticed, if you sense a longing in your heart to be like the ruler before you, to be like the world, and that's exactly what the world wants us, for us to be like them. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. If you find yourself there, they, they want us to surrender our, our will to theirs. They want, our, to, they want us to surrender to the ruler of this world. If you sense that hunger and appetite welling up inside of you, better known as jealousy. Hello? Better known as jealousy, better known as envy, better known as discontentment. Let me tell you right now, you, we need to consider that. And we need to consider that envy. And somebody answer, man. Turn it off. <laughs> Tell them you'll be back after a while. <laughs> don't you love that? Who is that? They don't know who it is. They don't know who it is. Everybody's looking around. Is that, is that, that correct? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Look, we need to consider that things like jealousy, and envy and discontentment. We need to consider that those things are sin. Amen. And those are the things that lead us away and divide our relationship with Jesus. Those are the things that keep us from having a single focus on Christ. Amen. And, and you say, well, I'm not a jealous person. Or I'm not an envious person. I'm, not a, I, I'm, I'm just as happy as I can be. And yet we'll see something on television. And even though we've got one, we'll say, I need that. We don't need that. Amen. I really think that this warning here in this scripture and the truth that Solomon is trying to convey in this portion of the Proverbs, if we are led by the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, then we might as well put a knife to our throat spiritually. We might as well put a knife to the throat of our spirit man. Amen. Because he's as good as dead. If that's what we're chasing after. We cannot serve God and man. We cannot walk in the flesh and obey the spirit. And all we got to do is look at Adam and Eve. Right. Amen. We've heard a lot about Adam and Eve over the last few months. Going through our Sunday school material. Life group material. Sorry, Don. Life group material. We've heard a lot about Adam and Eve. Go, go over to Genesis chapter 2 right quick. Genesis chapter 2. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 2. And I'm going to tell you something, we're not, we're not any different than Adam and Eve, folks. Right. Amen. Amen. Look at what it says in verse 15, chapter 2. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it, to go to work. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. That is an amazing account right there. Here's Adam and Eve. They, they, they have been created perfect in the eyes of God, created in the image of God, and, and they've been placed in a perfect garden. Right. And you just, I don't know what your picture of the Garden of Eden is, but man, can you just imagine what it must have looked like? I mean, this was without any sin. Yeah. Right. Hey, Amen. Can't imagine. Just, I mean, it had to be just unbelievably beautiful. And God said, of every tree in the garden you can eat. Every tree. I can't imagine. I mean, there had to be apples this big. There had to be mangoes, man. Have you, boy, I tell you, when we were in the Philippines, we, we ate mangoes over there. And it was like eating candy, wasn't it, Rip? Man, that was the best mangoes I ever ate in my life. They had to be mangoes this big in the garden of Eden. You know? And, and God says, you can eat out of all of them. They're all yours. But one. Don't you eat of that one. You want to know how strong discontentment is? You want to know how strong envy is? Well, why can't I have that one? If I can have all the rest of them, why can't I have that one? See, that's, that is a trick, folks, of the world today. If the world says, hey, you got, okay, you're saved, you got everything, you, you're joined out with Jesus Christ, but you need this. Amen? Right. You have access to every tree in the garden, say, boy, and the day that you eat thereof, you, 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 you will surely die. It'll be spiritual suicide. Chasing after that one more, that one more dollar, that one more possession, 
that one more rung on the ladder. You say, well, preacher, are we not supposed to do that? Not at the uh, demise of your spiritual relationship with Jesus. Amen. Solomon continues in verse 3 and he says this. He says, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. When we give in to the lust of the flesh, when our desire goes from pleasing God to satisfying our carnal desires, then we begin to drift away from the Lord. It was the deities that lured, lured the prodigal son away from his loving father. Amen. He had it all. He didn't have to worry about what he was eating. He didn't have to worry about what he was wearing. He didn't have to worry about anything. His father was taking care of him and supplying his every need, but it was the deities of that faraway country that got him. And you see what happened to him? He wasted his substance with riotous living. It cost him and it cost him and it cost him until he had nothing else to pay. And then he was willing to go and slop the hogs and eat what they were eating. That's what happens when we're drawn away. We cannot be deceived by putting our confidence in the dainties of this ruler. The dainties of this world. Listen to me, folks. I, I, you listen to me because I'm sharing the Word of God with you. Amen. And God's warning us. Be not desirous of His dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Look at verse 4. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thy own wisdom. This is what happens when we get all wrapped up in the dainties of the world. We get the wrong idea about why we're working. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, we, we get deceived into a wrong motive for work. And we'll, we'll be deceived into trusting our own wisdom. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is, this is good. This is from God. This is good. Yes, sir. Lean, do, we, begin to, we begin to look at labor. We begin to look at our work as a means to get rich. You say, is that not right? That's not why we labor. We don't labor to get rich. We labor to provide for our family and our needs. Right. <laughs> this goes over well, I know. We work not to get rich. We work to provide for our needs and to be able to help others. That's why we work. That's why we labor. Carnal wisdom says, oh, no, 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 no. You work so that you can get rich, so that you can get personal wealth, so that you can get more, so that you can build bigger barns, so that you can have more. That's why you work. That's the wrong motive. Amen. You know why we work or how we are to work? We are to work as unto the Lord. Amen. 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 If we work Amen. as unto the Lord, then why in the world are we working for personal wealth? That's right. Amen. Amen. We labor to help others. Fleshly wisdom tells us to labor for personal gain. And that is spiritual suicide. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. If we labor for riches... If our motivation is to gain personal wealth, we will have no time or energy for spiritual growth or spiritual service. Amen. Amen. I can you know as well as I do how many people are kept out of the house of God and how, they, how many people are kept out of the service of God because they're working and they're laboring. You say, well, yeah, but they're not, getting, they're not doing it to gain personal wealth. They're doing it to pay their bills. You know what? They got too many bills. Amen. We don't work to supply our needs. We work to pay off our debt. Because we bought more than we can pay for. That's good preaching, so you can keep it up. It's spiritual suicide. When we get so far in debt that we can't serve God, when we get so far in debt that we have to work extra hours and extra, and it keeps us out of the house of God, that's spiritual suicide. Right. Might as well put a knife to our throat is what he said. Look at verse 5. Wilt thou set thine eye upon that which is not for riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Can I get an amen? Yes, sir. When we lose our focus on Jesus Christ and our spiritual vision becomes blurred, when we no longer listen to the truth of God but begin to listen to our own understanding, when we place our hopes and our confidence in the dainties of this world, then we try to convince ourselves that riches are eternal. <coughs> and if they're not eternal, at least they last a long time. Sure. Let me tell you how long they last. They can be gone in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. 
Now, listen. Now, I, I, I'm going I'm to tell you this. This is a little personal. And I'm not, I'm not seeking anything. So please don't think that. I just, it's a great example. The church started a few years back and given me a certain amount of money every year for my retirement. And Mr. Wingfield got with me and, and we invested it into some, some stocks so that I would earn some money for retirement. You can't put it in the bank and earn anything. You get, a, you get 25 cents a month if you get that. So we put it in the stock market. Let me tell you something. December, January, February, March. I've lost lost twelve thousand dollars of my retirement. Now, now look, I haven't lost any of the church's money that they put in there, but everything that I had gained over the last few years, in the last four months, I've lost twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Now I'm gonna tell you something. If my confidence was in that, if my trust was in that, hey, look, I ain't looking to retire. I'm looking to graduate. Amen. Amen. My confidence is not in that. It's okay. I don't. I don't lose any sleep over. It. But there's a lot of people who are, man, they're trusted in those deities of the world. Their, their, their confidence is, is in their money and their bank account. And buddy, when that sprouts wings and flies away, I can tell you what happens. They begin to doubt the providential care of their Heavenly Father. They begin to think, well, maybe God can't take care of me. Maybe God will, will not meet my needs. Say, preacher, come on, people don't think that. Yes, they do. Yes, sir. As soon as they start losing something, That's right. wait a minute, God, why am I losing this? Aren't you able to take care of me? Our confidence is in Him. Amen. He will supply our needs. Yes. Whether He supplies them here or He supplies them there. Amen. He might not always send the ravens. It's spiritual suicide to put our trust in the things of this world. Look at the last three verses of the text. I, I, I'll move on. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart's not with thee. The, the morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. The he and the him in these verses are a great type of the world. They are a picture of mammon and the ways of the world. The world has an evil eye toward us. Amen. Oh, the world says, hey, come on, you need more of this. Come on, just help yourself. Eat, drink, take, man, just get you plenty of it. But the, the world has an evil eye toward us. Amen. You need to consider that. What we, what we chase after so often times are just the things that are going to slow us down in our spiritual walk. They become the weights. Amen. They become the weights that slow us down in this spiritual race that we're in. When God's Word tells us that the world is enmity towards God, then we need to take heed. That's right. Amen? If we're a child of God, then the world has an evil eye toward us. They do not want our good. Amen. Don't be deceived. The world does not want the good for the Christian. That's right. Verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he saith he to thee, but it is, his heart is not with thee. That reveals the intentions of this world. Amen. His heart is not with us. The world will appear to have our good in mind, but the truth is the heart of the world is not with us. It is against us. That's right. And what the Christian, the Christian that loses focus will find is that in the end, the lavish things of the world are just a morsel. Amen. Just a morsel. For, listen to verse 8. The morsel which thou hast eaten. Let me tell you something. You can have everything this world throws at you. And you'll still starve to death spiritually. Right. You'll find it is just a morsel. I know why Edwards over there giving me all these amens. He's lost it all. That's right. Yes, I do. But the Lord has provided the two care of me for this day I see. Oh, brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. We can eat at the world's table and never be satisfied. And in the end, we will vomit it all up and lose everything we have. As the old saying goes, I've never seen a U-Haul following a hearse. That's right. That's right. You're not going to take anything with you out of this world. The only thing that's going to go before you is that which is done for Christ. Amen. Amen. Church, we need to get focused tonight on laying up treasures in heaven. Amen. 
We need to fall out of love with this world, and we need to return to our first love, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Don't put yourself in a place where you will commit spiritual suicide. Quit chasing the world. Quit chasing the things of this world. <coughs> Choose life tonight. Amen. In Jesus. Amen. Amen. Stand with me. Give God my for the glory of the invitation. Nice <coughs> Friend, if you're here tonight and you don't have eternal life through Jesus Christ, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, listen to me. You're not in danger of committing spiritual suicide. You're already dead in trespasses and sin. And the only hope you have is to surrender your life to Jesus. You have no life. I don't care what you have in this world. You have no life without Christ. Today will be a good day to get saved. Now's a great time. Sunday night is a great time for you to be saved. I don't know why you've put it off, but the Bible says now is the accepted time. If you know you're a sinner, you know you're lost, you know that you have no hope of heaven. You're ready to give it up and give it all over to the Lord. Would you slip your hand up right where you stand? Would you do that tonight? What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? You need Jesus? Would you raise your hand? How many here tonight would just be honest before God and say, you know what, I've been chasing after the world way too much. The old flesh has been driving me way too much. I see your hand. Thank you. The world is way too important to me. I would have to describe my spiritual eyesight as blurred. If that's you not, would you slip your hand up? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can't be a friend with the world and be a friend with Jesus. You can't follow after the things of this world and follow after Christ. Don't deceive yourself. Consider these things. We're getting late in the ball game, folks. We need to get as close to Jesus as we possibly can. Whatever the cost, it's worth it. Fathers, we come before the throne of grace tonight. We are absolutely certain tonight that you know everything about us. You know the desires of our heart. You know if we are contented with the things, such things as we have or you know if there is discontentment there and it's causing us to be, we're chasing after the world. We want more of this and we want more of that. So God, I pray that you search every heart here tonight. God, every one of us. Let the Holy Spirit just plow us up tonight. Let us see ourselves as we really are. Don't let us be deceived any longer. God, let us consider these things that are going on around us. Let us consider the things that drive us God, I pray tonight that we'll repent of those things that are hindering our walk with you. And God, I do pray tonight that every one of us will draw closer to our first love. And we'll give you the praise for it. Lord, we love you. Thank you for a good day in the house of God today. We'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.